Welcome back to the NJCAA Men's Division I Basketball Tournament. We're in the beautiful Hutchinson Sports Arena, we have our first team that has locked their bid into the Final Four in the Barton Cougars. With us is head coach Jeremy Combs from Barton. Awesome game, man. 87 to 73 win over a really talented Northwest Florida team. You guys were incredible from start to finish. I thought you really controlled the game. Your dominance in the paint was just awesome to watch. Talk about your Cougars and uh, what, what stood out to you today. Well, you said start to finish, and it was really uh, it's about that 10 minute mark there at the end. We didn't play very well and kind of made it ugly, you know. But I thought our first, dip, uh, you know, definitely in the first half, we were. We were out hitting on all cylinders offensively. Uh, defensively, we were locked in. Uh, and in that 10 minutes in that uh, second half was really, really good. And I think we controlled the glass, and that's really what did it. Coach, Mose Downing Rivers, one of our favorite players last year, one of our favorite players this year. But obviously, early on, kind of gets a little dinged, and it just held him back for a long time. But now, being healthy, clicking on all cylinders, being the type of true point guard that he is, so important to this team. Talk a little bit about that journey for him this year, getting to this point. You know, uh, I don't think people realize how special that young man is. I, I posted something yesterday about how many wins he's had in his career. That's the only thing that I have to see. That's the only stat that I have to see with that young man. He can do whatever. He can score it on the floor if he wants to. He passes the ball probably better than I, anybody I've ever coached. Um, he just changes the game, and he, he makes it. He makes us better uh, every time he's on the floor and the ball's in his hands. And we want it in his hands every single time up and down the floor. Sometimes, you know, like I said, late in that game, we got a little goofy with the basketball. But, uh, uh, you know, we want to get that ball in his hands, and he's going to make things happen. Yeah, you guys are, you know, loaded, deep roster. Everybody is contributing and really impacting winning. One of the guys that I don't think anybody talks about nationally who's, who I've really fallen in love with is Cooper Jackson. Yeah. yeah just, no. a, just a defensive menace. He's a guy that changes the game completely, you know, especially the way we play. You know, we want to play defense, you know, defense first stuff. Uh, but he just, I mean, he's that guy that every night when, whenever the ball goes up in the air and the, the other team finds out who he's guarding, they know they're in for a hell of a night. You know, it's going to be a long night no matter what. Seven steals today for him. Holy that's, cow. Uh, I didn't even. That's something. <laughs> yeah. No, and he's been defensive player in the Jayhawk for the last two years. Um, you know, it, I had, there was that, he actually got some player of the year votes, which, you know, that's pretty big to get those votes when you're, I mean, essentially he's the defensive guy, you know. Right. Um, so for somebody to vote that, obviously they, they, they get it. They understand what he does for the game. Yeah, for all of the Division One coaches who are texting Brandon and I looking for guards who can help them win games, <laughs> his name is Cooper Jackson. What is he, number 20? What's up about, Coach? 24. 24, number one, in, number one in your heart, 24 in the program. He has incredible hair. It, so just look for the guy on the film with the, the flowing locks. He's a he's an energy bunny, man. I mean, he's that guy. Like, they were, my assistants were telling me, hey, we might want to save some of these guys and you know save their legs. We got to play tomorrow. And like Cooper's like, just let me play. I'm, I'm good. Go. You know, I'm just good. getting warmed up, coach. Yeah. <laughs> you know, before the game, we talked about. Uh, for me, I thought Ring Malith was going to be the X factor in this one. So he made me look really smart, which you can tell him I appreciate. I hate it when you say something and then doesn't turn out to be true and you look stupid. So he made me look real smart. Um, talk a little bit about Ring, be Ring because he is, for all intents and purposes, one of the more unheralded, very talented players in the league. Yeah, no, he, he just doesn't pass the eye test. I mean, obviously they look at him, they go 6'9", but uh, he's real skinny. I had a kid like that, Joseph Akul, who played for me, ended up playing at Baylor. At the next level, they'll put meat on his bones. I'm not worried about that. But that kid can flat stroke the basketball. Now, obviously, they're guarding the heck out of him. Uh, right now and, and running him off the three-point line and but he can he can score in other ways too But but he can really really stretch, you know stretch the defense and, and uh, you know he, He's just and not not just that but defensively. He's good as well, and he can guard one through five Coach, thank you so much for stopping by we know uh, you want to be with your guys You want to get ready to watch the game behind us. So uh, congratulations. Welcome to the final four Thanks for being a, uh, a fan of Juco jam and coming on this season. You've yeah. done a lot to Love help it. us to help us out and we really appreciate thank it. Thank you for everything you guys do for the for the JUCO guys. I mean it's phenomenal. Appreciate, right. it. appreciate it. We appreciate it. Coach, right. be with your guys. Enjoy thank the you. game. Congratulations. Thanks, Coach. Thanks, That's Coach Jeremy Combs with the Barton Cougars, the first team into the final four in this 2024 NJCAA Division I championship. Brandon, impressive. Absolutely. I mean, a really good Northwest Florida team. They put it on them pretty good. Coaches are funny because you say, you know, from start to finish, kept foot on the gas. It goes, ah, 10 minutes to go. You know, we just got all, it's like, okay. But that's why they win. That's why they're really good <laughs> yeah. at what they do. Um, because it was, it was really start to finish. 
dominant uh, the entire game. You and I are sitting there talking about the points in the paint number just keeps growing and growing and growing. There was a run uh, that, that maybe eight to ten unanswered uh, points, and they were all in the paint for Barton. And if you're, if you're not going to try and match them physically, you better be burying everything from outside, and that just wasn't happened. Can't can't not hit on both. Those I think factors. it wore down Northwest Florida mentally that they were just getting just hammered inside the paint just over and over again. I thought it just broke them down. They kind of at some point there was just a breaking point. For sure. And it was uh, too little, too late. Barton into the final four, folks. Uh, game game number 18 of the tournament, two of the day. Shortly we will declare a second team into the final four. Uh, warming up behind us, we have the Triton Trojans. Uh, from River Grove, Illinois, and South Plains, the number two overall seed from Loveland, Texas. Uh, this is going to be a tale of, of, of two stories here. Talk a little bit about uh, what you're thinking about in this game. Yeah, this is going to be very stylistically different. This is going to be the firm, four horsemen of the apocalypse, whatever you want to call them, out there trying to bury shots <coughs> Excuse me. versus uh, the physical length, strength, inside presence of South Plains. You've got Malik Ewan, you've got Jabori McGee, who looks like an NFL player that can get to his spot wherever he wants. He can shoot the ball. Um, this is this should be a heck of a fight. Yeah, and let's talk a little bit about how we got to this point. Uh, Monday, Triton defeated Trinity Valley 105 to 87. Triton very good as a smaller team. They were plus 14 in rebounds. What they do best, 10 out of 27 from three. And here's something to watch out in this game. Triton very good at getting to the free throw line. 37 out of 45 on Monday at the free throw line. That's 82 percent. Amar Aguilar, 35 points. Dylan Williams, 21. Dior Connors, 17. A.J. Dixon, 16. For South Plains, they had to fight from behind to defeat Panola, 80 to 76. In fact, they were down 47-39 at half. South Plains hasn't stroked the ball from outside real well throughout the season. They hit 6 out of 10 on Monday. Also something to watch in this game. 17 offensive rebounds. Jabari McGee, 22. Malik Ewan, 21 and 9. Jamari Hill with 19. I would imagine Triton's Triton's probably going to do everything they can to stop Malik Ewan inside and Kerwin Prince, Jalen Hampton. Seth Plains is just bigger, stronger inside. And that's probably going to open some opportunities for the three-point shot for South Plains. Coach Burns, he's going to have to pick, you know, his poison on what he's going to try to stop. It's going to be strategically interesting in this chess match between two of, I think, the best young coaches in basketball, between Coach Brian Burns at Triton, Coach Hayden Sowers at South Plains. Yeah, it's actually really exciting to see both of these guys be super successful very early on into their head coaching careers. Something that that you know junior college needs. It's that next that next it's the group pipeline. of guys, yeah. right? The pipeline of, of coaches. Uh, you know, shout out to Jeremy Shulman this morning announced as the new head coach of UT Martin. There are young coaches that are phenomenal that are in this league. Um, there are coaches that have gone on to have great Division One success. We see them all over the place at high major basketball that got their start here, and now we're seeing the next generation of those guys get those opportunities to then move on and be the next group. It's really, really cool. Right, Rick Cabrera, right, took Tallahassee deep in the tournament last year. He goes straight from junior college to get a head coaching position at Northwestern State in Natchitoches, Louisiana. Great to see Coach Shulman getting the same Ritter opportunity. moved on to Mercer after having a great, uh, you know, few years there at UT Martin, uh, replaced by now Jeremy Shulman. So UT Martin AD said, hey, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Right, and I think in the new era of, of college basketball that we're in, nobody knows the landscape of recruiting people year over year and starting all over from scratch more so than junior college basketball coaches. I think they are the elite minds and thinkers and recruiters to build get college creative. programs. Have to get creative, especially programs like that where guys get that first opportunity. You know what you don't have is a bunch of NIL money. You can't go buy a new roster if everybody transfers out. You have to be creative. You have to use those relationships. You have to look at junior college. You know, everybody talks about these JUCO guys knowing JUCO guys. Well, you know what else they know is high school guys because they bring them to all the junior college. Right, and the preps, right? And the prep percent And the prep school. So behind us, we have Triton, the Trojans, out of River Grove, Illinois. We have South Plains, the junior college powerhouse out of Leveland, Texas. It's going to be a great game coming up, game 18. Stay with us. If you haven't done so already, make sure that you have subscribed to ESPN Plus to catch the amazing live coverage.